Folks, the Black Lives Matter organization has been in a state of flux uh, over the last couple of years. From the moment they announced uh, the $90 million they had received in the wake of the death of George Floyd, uh, they have been under intense criticism. They have been, folks have been criticizing former co-founder Patrice Cullors uh, for uh, the purchase of personal homes for her, but also a home uh, for the organization. You've had the Black Lives Matter Global Network, a whole back and forth over uh, their board of directors, who's controlling the group, who's controlling the money. Well, today, uh, the Black Lives Matter grassroots announced, uh, in essence, that they are separating themselves. To fully explain this, uh, this is their uh, first interview. They had a live stream earlier. This is their first interview explaining this. It's Melina Abdullah. Uh, she, of course, leads Black Lives Matter Los Angeles. Uh, Melina, always glad to have you. So uh, so explain to folks um, what y'all have decided, because when you look at that press release, that statement, um, it's, it sounded very contentious uh, in blasting the Black Lives Matter Global Network, uh, the foundation, if you will, uh, for, um, for, for, you know, for a number of things when it, com when it comes to uh, what, what you label in the press release as self-dealing. Self Absolutely. So not only are we publicly um, making sure that people understand or doing what we can to make sure that people understand that the Global Network Foundation is in the hands of a highly paid consultant who earned, according to their own reports, I won't say earned, I, I should say given himself contracts, um, according to his own um, reporting of $2.2 million at the beginning of 2020 alone, right? So we want to make sure that we distinguish ourselves from them, that we are separate from them, but we're also suing them. We filed a lawsuit this morning. We know that when people donated to Black Lives Matter very generously in 2020 especially, but also through the last three years that they were donating in order to contribute to the work that's being done on the ground, to the work that's being done to end qualified immunity and the work that's being done to build a uh, black infrastructure in cities like Buffalo, to the work that's being done in the names of our stolen loved ones to topple unjust political systems um, and systems like prisons and policing. And so those dollars should rightfully belong to those who birthed, built, and are fueling the movement as well as our platforms. So people might notice a shift in what they see on Black Lives Matter social media. That's because in March of this year, um, again, a usurper, one of these highly paid consultants named Shalomia Bowers, logged us out of our own social media and is now using consultants to post um, on the platforms that we built over the last nine years. The BLK Lives Matter platforms are in the hands of someone who is not Black Lives Matter, who in fact is a consultant that never had their boots on the ground, who never has been in the streets, who's never put their lives and their careers and their bodies on the line, but is using our work and the names of our loved ones to enrich himself. So uh, the, this was, or even when Patrice was on my show last year, maybe it was in 2020, uh, I, I was still just totally confused who did what, who was what, uh, and it was all over the place. And so um, as a part of what took place today, uh, she, released, she released a statement. Uh, this is part of it. She says, when I stepped down from the BLM Global Network Foundation in May 2021, I left a transition plan meant to ensure that grassroots retain the social media accounts as the forward-facing body of BLM be handed the financial assets to advance the movement and continue to be a be the body that represents Black Lives Matter. I mean, isn't part of a part of this situation where we're in right now is because it was convoluted in the first place in terms of who was doing what, who was over what, uh, and so now you're left at a place where the money was going to the foundation, the foundation was supposed to disperse it to these various entities, and now she leaves, and now you know someone else takes over it, and so now it's sort of like all over the place. But you didn't That's have a continuity of, of leadership. Because even when she left, you didn't actually have a team that was left in place. Like, it, it was it was hell for me just to even find out who the hell to talk to. 
That's right. That's right. And so there were, were two people who were very trusted that were named to be the senior executives of the Global Network Foundation. That's Makani Temba and Monifa Bandele. Unfortunately, the same political consultant refused to open up the books to them. So they said, I don't want that mess. And they were actually never onboarded to lead the Global Network Foundation through this transition. Listen, when Black Lives Matter was born in 2013, when it came out of our collective rage when George Zimmerman was acquitted in the murder of Trayvon Martin, we were all just stepping into our sacred duty. We were building what we said was a movement, not a moment, right? And it took some time to develop structure. Um, we, I was fully committed and many of us were fully committed to continuing as a movement, not a moment. But this global network foundation was kind of formed to receive these resources. And it was important that the boots on the ground also had a name and an umbrella. And so in actually before the 2020 uprisings, we decided to assemble ourselves as a collective of chapters under the banner of BLM Grassroots because there had been another consultant who we thought was misrepresenting Black Lives Matter, and we wanted to draw that distinction. When Patrice took the helm back after the 2020 uprisings commenced, there was kind of some um, better coordination and clearer vision. But then when she stepped down again in 2021, it caused an additional mess and opened up the way for, again, this usurper um, to seize control because he seeks to enrich himself. So y'all are suing them. You're suing them to gain what? We're suing them for the dollars. We're suing them for the um, social media platform, which were actually built and maintained far be long before there was a Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, right? BLK Lives Matter on Twitter and Instagram started very early in our work, 2013, 2014, we start gaining followers. So we built up these platforms. I was the main one who posted to our BLK Lives Matter Instagram, which has 4 million followers, right? who are looking for the work that we do on the ground. So we're suing for the return of those platforms and we're suing for the return of our name. So they need to stop representing themselves as Black Lives Matter. They're um, really damaging our reputation. They're saying things that are harmful and hurtful and contribute more to the trauma of families. And this is not who Black Lives Matter is. So we're suing for, again, the dollars, the social media platforms, and our good name. Um, questions from my panel. Let's see. I'll start with Erica. All right. Thank you so much for connecting with us this evening. And um, I saw that there was a piece um, that Black Lives Matter, the Global Foundation, um, had, um, I guess, done an insight philanthropy on yesterday. So just really interested in, in seeing, you know, they're posting like, it uh, seems like every, you know, two or three hours um, via Sprout Social. So my question for you would be, um, you said you're suing to get that capital that you yourself have sweat equity into. Um, those consultants that are posting um, out of curiosity, are those white folks? Um, are you all familiar with them? And um, um, and um, how much are they being paid to um, do what they're doing currently? So I've never been on the inside, and thank you for that question. I've never been on the inside of the Global Network Foundation. I don't really know with certainty how much folks are being paid and who the folks are. I can say that the board is populated by three people. Um, and the person who for some time maintained individual control, sole control over the board is someone named Shalomia Bowers. He is not white. Um, he is a black person who practices Judaism and um, does not um, really connect with black community. In fact, when we were in a more um, cordial relationship, he shared with me that he'd never even been to a protest. Um, so this is 
who's kind of at the helm, you'll see that his firm, Bowers Consulting, is the number one expenditure from Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. I don't know who the other folks are. I do know that um, there was some time when most of their consultants were, in fact, white. I don't know if that continues to be the case because I'm not on the inside and I don't have a friendly relationship right now. Thank you for your work. Thank you. Reason. Thank you, Melina, for being here. Um, I do recall, and Roland probably remembers this, uh, that these board members were on the show, Roland specifically, in May, and it seemed a little inadequate, the kinds of reforms, I guess you can say, they were putting in place. For me, though, I'm still quite confused as to what the structure is, how any particular entity has claim over that specific entity, for instance, with the Black Lives Matter grassroots versus the foundation. It seemed like at the time back in May, this was done to create more transparency, but it seems like it's created more confusion. So I guess let me ask you, going back to the initial kind of reforms that were announced, the quote unquote transparency uh, center that they put out there, were you in agreement at that time with the reforms that were made? And and, and then the other question I have is just, where's the paperwork? I, I see the website, but I just wonder if there's some sort of legal paperwork behind this that kind of could help square some of this away, or is that what the purpose of the lawsuit is, is to try to establish that kind of documents um, beyond just what's on a website? Right. So that is the purpose of the lawsuit. And thank you for that question. Let me say that the Global Network Foundation can't even spell transparency, like quite literally. <laughs> if you go to the Black Lives Matter Instagram, they have a post now that says transparency and transparency is literally misspelled. Um, mm. So the, the um, idea that they're being transparent in itself is a lie. The last thing that they reported was as of June 30th, 2020. We don't know what Bowers has paid himself since June 30th, 2020. We know that first reporting period was $2.2 million. We know that there's many other expenditures that went to, again, these highly paid consultants, but we don't know where those dollars have gone. The lawsuit will be helpful in demanding information. There we go, misspelled transparency. Yes. Uh, Greg. Uh, thank you, Roland, and it's good to see you, Doc. Good to see you, sis. And, uh, good to see you, Dr. Carr. Always, always. And I'm I'm sorry about this. I mean, we're seeing the influence of foundations in the reparations movement, for example. All of a sudden, here come the money. And we know when the money comes, the problems are soon behind. You got forces trying to shape this. I, I guess, um, you know, my question is really around how you imagine this might possibly be and uh, could be resolved in, in terms of this for I mean beyond beyond obviously litigation and, and uh, because of course they have posted today that Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation um, alleging that the grassroots organization got some, a seven million dollar budget and there were ten thousand dollar a month stipends put in and of course these numbers begin to pile up and the simple fact that it matters seems to be that once money is involved like that then you can almost predict what's going to happen next. How, and of course, uh, Alicia Garza has been here in the last month talking about the work that they're doing, the the the, the, the census, the Black Census Project and all that kind of thing. How, how and you know, given your long experience as, a, as an organizer, as a thinker, as an academic, as a sister in the street doing this struggle work, how, do, what would be the best case scenario in terms of trying to figure out a way to, to achieve some form of operational unity? Is this a matter of one or two people that just need to be taken out of the process in your mind? I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm asking. So when we talk about operational unity, Dr. Carr, and you know this better than anybody, right? You have to start with people who are aligned basically in terms of vision. The people who are in charge of the Global Network Foundation right now have no interest in advancing black liberation. What they have an interest in is lining their pockets. And so we absolutely 
have to move them out of the picture. Best case scenario, we're able to move the three of them out of the picture and create a board that really is grounded in community. I think it's a phenomenal idea to have a well-funded foundation, right, that is led by people who we trust. We were on our way there. When you talk about people like Makani Tamba and Monifa Bandele, these are people with decades of work put into le Black liberation, right? Um, yes. I think it's a phenomenal idea for them to have charge of dollars that can be used for Black liberation. They can do that work. We can set up a foundation in a way that's self-sustaining, right? Where you give a percentage of the foundation away, you grant it out, you grant some of it to Black Lives Matter chapters, and you grant some of it to other Black liberation organizations every year, sustainably, right? And then I think it's wonderful to have, you know, a sister organization that is the boots on the ground, like Black Lives Matter grassroots. The issue is they don't share our vision for Black liberation and are moving based on self-interest. So best case scenario, they will be moved out. Um, best case scenario, scenario, people who are in best case scenario, they will voluntarily say, you know, we're going to return these resources. The people, again, who struggle for it, I'll end by saying this, I think that their, um, their statement is meant to put targets on the backs of activists. They know mm. very well what they're doing when they name me, right? This is not a fight between Melina Abdullah and Shalomia Bowers, right? This is a fight between those who are boots on the ground that include me, but are not only me. They're the hundreds and thousands of activists who put in work every day versus, mm. again, highly paid highly paid consultants who line their pockets based on the work that we put in. And standing with us today during the press conference were dozens of families, the family of Stefan Clark, the family of Andrew Joseph III, the family of Grishari Mack, all stand with us. The family of Jacob Blake and Breonna Taylor stand with us. And they're demanding that the people who they know who struggle alongside them have the resources restored, have the dollars granted so that they can be trusted with making sure that the movement moves moves forward in the interest of black liberation. Okay, so I'm gonna try this again. So so you have the Black Lives Global Network, which is the funding conduit. If people want to give, they weren't giving to Black Lives Matter Grassroots, they were going to the Global Network Foundation, correct? Right. That's right. The Global Foundation is basically a fiscal agent. And so their responsibility was to dole out money to grassroots or to other organizations, correct? That's right. So the chapters, uh, y'all have, have, there are officially 26 Black Lives Matter chapters aligned with Black Lives Matter grassroots, correct? That's right. For the folks who don't know, because the name took off, they could not actually trademark the name. That's why there are there are Black Lives Matter organizations all around America that are actually not affiliated with the official Black Lives Matter entity, Global Network or Grassroots, correct? That's right. Okay, so here's the, uh, where I'm still not confused, uh, because uh, is so if if the people who are on the Black Lives, if y'all are successful in getting them moved out. Well, who the hell then picks a new board? You got to have an mm -hmm. a, a entity that's over a foundation. So who 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 then picks a new board? So here, here's two options, Roland. Either there could be a board of people that are trusted and we could help identify those people or which is the, the one that was the original demand and the original plan actually before Patrice Cullors stepped down. The Global Network Foundation could shut down and just grant out all its money to the Black Lives Matter gra grassroots fund. Right. Got it. Okay. Can uh, I ask a question? So, so I'll actually hold tight one second. So, okay. uh, so the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation Board of Directors, 
They issued a response to you. Uh, it, um, they said, we faced yet again another round of struggle for control of one organization, this time uh, people who say they love black people and center abolitionist values, but whose action uh, are furthest uh, from movement principles of courageous conversations, reconciliation, and finding pathways for peace and understanding. Uh, and then it says, as the newly assembled Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation board directors, we were onboarding to bring the, we were we were onboarded to bring the organization into compliance. And along the way, we have done our due diligence to honor the vision the founders left behind. Uh, they said, we the board have zero interest in taking significant time away from our work towards building the solid trust the foundation. We're focused on the future. Uh, and then they uh, they said the book, the foundation board requested on over 10 occasions, private mediation or meetings with Melina Abdullah and BLM Grassroots, including and regarding social media policies. We did so in order to stay true to principles of abolition, uh, but Melina and BLM GR ignored or refused our offers. Is that true? No, that's a blatant lie. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, we have a letter <laughs> requesting that of them. So this is a classic case of gaslighting. Um, we have receipts that can demonstrate that as early as March, we said return the social medias and we can mediate everything else. That was written by our attorney of record at the time, um, George Fothery, and it went unresponded to. Um, and there are many, many subsequent requests to do that. They say that you. Uh, they, they they say that you uh, you take issue with quote not being given control of all financial assets and the social media accounts. Uh, they also say since Patricia's departure, quote Melina Abdullah and BLM grassroots have sent threatening letters and attacked the livelihood of BLM GNS board members directly. Not only have they demanded the resignation of current BLM GNF leadership in efforts to seize the financial resources of BLM. GNF via intimidation tactics, but they have quite literally forced the firing of a BLM GNF. Member from her job community. You respond to right. That? Yeah, that's another blatant lie. We did absolutely engage, and this is part of the calling in, right? We did engage in a movement letter that remained private, right? A hundred black leaders signed on to a letter saying that Shalomia Bowers needs to step down. Um, and so we have that letter. We've now released it publicly. Um, but it's signed by a hundred movement leaders, including Makani Tamba, including Monifa Bandela, including people like Ashley Woodard Henderson and Rukia Lumumba and Pete White and movement elders like Hank Jones. And so we did that privately. Um, it became public today, but until then was not public. So what they're saying is a blatant lie. Just two more. Uh, I'm gonna, they said, lastly, BLMGR and Melina Abdullah read a press statement claiming that Patrice Cullors created a transition plan giving all of BLM GNF's assets to BLM grassroots. That is absolutely false. In fact, that statement in the press release was recanted by Patrice and her team. No such plan exists or ever has. She said, in fact, when Patrice Cullors stepped down from being the sole decision maker, executive director, and sole board member of BLM GNF in June 2021, she appointed a five person leadership council. So she did appoint a five person leadership council. That part is true. Um, it is true that they did not want the statement that was approved by Patrice yesterday morning released. And part of that is because of her legal fears. Um, there is a transition memo, which I have a copy of. And so, again, we have receipts. And so, you know, at no time, my mother and my grandmother always say, if you lie, you'll steal. If you steal, you'll kill. Right. So it, it scares me um, away from lying. And so most people, even my enemies, will say um, she doesn't lie. So there are no lies. But those who steal probably lied first. And so I want to be very clear that there was a right. transition memo and um, there is a transition memo and we have copies of it. Last one here. They say, Bill, that the, your grassroots uh, there has received $7 million this year uh, and that also they said 
soundness in the decision not to transfer further assets to BLM GNF was reinforced when BLM GNF learned that BLM DR, which is which is your your entity, grassroots uh, leaders were giving themselves ten thousand dollar monthly stipends while claiming they were volunteer leaders instead of allotting those resources to either further developing their grassroots infrastructure or redirecting those funds to local organizers. Um, is that true or false that the Black Lives Matter grassroots uh, leaders were giving themselves $10,000 monthly stipends? That's an absolute fabrication. I don't even know where they get that from. So that's absolutely untrue. Okay. All right. Well, um, I certainly uh, um, uh, had said before uh, to um, uh, uh, the Shalom actually follows me on Twitter. I, I sent him a DM a few months ago. I've told the PR people uh, I still would love to have them on because I still I still am absolutely confused. Uh, Reese asked the question. I'm still absolutely confused by the, the whole infrastructure. It, it, is, it is sort of all over the place. I'm, I'm still to quite understand it. Uh, I, I got a guess that's been holding for quite some time, but Reese, real quick, what's your question? Oh, my question, just real quick, is: Is there an actual structure, organizational structure, with some sort of bylaws or some sort of articles of incorporation for the grassroots side that is I in the position to take over for the funding and the things that are kind of in dispute? So the Global Network Foundation claims transparency, but again, they can't even spell transparency. So I don't know what they have. I can say no, that no, Black Lives no, Matter grassroots absolutely no, no, has. No, Melina, to. Melina, her question was for, for you, for grassroots. Do y'all yes. have established hierarchy? Who's at the top? Who's number two, number three? Bylaws, all stuff that governs Black Lives Matter grassroots. We do. We do have bylaws. I want to close also. I'm sorry. Is that, is that, is that, pub is that published? Um, it should be because we just filed for a legal status in California, um, which makes okay. everything public. So I'm happy to share those bylaws with you. Okay. okay. All um, right. I, I want to uh, say, though, Roland, I want to just offer. I want to be clear about what they've done by using the platform that we built in order to attack us. And what that means that with active threats that they're very well aware of on my life, and you've reported on this, um, that when they do that, when they have millions of followers, they're opening us up to physical danger. Our names shouldn't be um, put out for targeting without their names, without their them also being on the line. So people should investigate who is Shalomia Bowers, who is Cecily Gay, who filed for bankruptcy three or four times and wears shirts that say things like, I'm billing you for this conversation. Who is Dijanae Parker, who um, is, you know, you can look at her Instagram and see that she's basically a lingerie model, right? And what... Um, qualifies these people to be the leaders, the so-called leaders of the largest racial justice movement of our lifetime and perhaps in history. All right. Melina Abdullah, leader of Black Lives Matter Los Angeles uh, with the Black Lives Matter grassroots. Uh, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, folks, back to that Roland Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Can you believe the nerve of these Republicans? They only want to block progress for our community. They talk about cutting Medicare and Social Security. They played politics with veterans' health care. They voted against the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act and funding for our HBCUs and against lowering prescription drug costs for our seniors. These Republicans keep trying hard to stand in the way, but President Biden, Vice President Harris, and Democrats won't let them. They are delivering for us. The Democratic National Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot 
tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. 